Okay, Ivan. So, um, I mean, setting up the wave here is straightforward, yeah? It says you have two of them making an angle theta. Uh, they have the same amplitude, but they make an angle theta. So, that means if one of them is, uh, let's write them as sine waves, right? So, if one of them is E0 sine, uh, omega t, or E theta, whatever. Uh, the other one, E2, has to be the same thing, except here you have to add theta, yeah? So this would be the two waves. Or let's call this E0. E0. Oh, E theta is the resulting interference pattern. So, so that means E theta will equal E1 plus E2. And then we're going to add them, and hopefully that will work out. So you want to try adding these two? So that's E sine omega t plus E zero sine omega t plus theta. Yeah. And now we could play with some trig identities here. I'll let you attempt in order to get them uh, to a more concise answer that can put that because then we're gonna. So after we do this, we'll. It's easy because we'll be able to relate a radiance to the electric field because uh, the irradiance is proportional to the uh, square of the amplitude, right? The irradiance is proportional to the square of the amplitude. We know we know that for sure. Yeah, here if you pull out an E0, then you get uh, sine omega t plus sine omega t plus theta. Uh, there's a trig identity that you can change sum to product. You could change sum to product. Uh, it says uh, sine x plus sine y is equal to 2 sine their sum over 2 x plus y over 2 cosine their difference over 2 and so now you can apply this identity up here on the sum oh I should have brackets around this guy here Okay, so plugging that into the trig identity, E theta to equal uh, E zero sine their sum uh, so when we add them we're gonna get uh, Uh, 
Yeah, sorry guys, pen stopped writing for a moment. Okay, so when we add them, we're gonna get uh, Uh, sine uh, 2 omega t plus theta over 2 cosine their difference uh, minus theta over 2 and so this will become uh, e0 sine now uh, this could be rewritten as omega t plus theta over 2 and since this one retains the uh, time dependence uh, let me write the other one first so that's uh, cosine oh I forgot the 2 here or the 2 so 2 is 0 cos, uh, cosine negative theta over 2 is the same exact thing as theta over 2 and so this will be a theta uh, so this wave will have a frequency of omega uh, but its, mal uh, its amplitude is has an additional factor of 2 cosine uh, theta over 2 and uh, so this will be the entire amplitude and we know generally speaking that uh, uh, I the irradiance is proportional to uh, in general to the amplitude squared so generally speaking it's proportional to E0 squared so in this case I will be proportional to uh, to the amplitude is 2 e0 cosine theta over 2 all squared and so this will be proportional to 4 e0 squared cosine squared theta over 2 okay uh, now we're close but we're not yet at that formula to get to that formula we need to relate the path difference and the path and the phase difference and we know in general that uh, uh, we know in general that uh, the uh, let's go on the side here and elaborate on a few things uh, we know that there's this wave number K uh, and what that is it's 2 pi over lambda that's the magnitude of the propagation vector now we know that in general the phase difference uh, is equal is some multiple of that and uh, that's just the how much more is the path difference uh, the path difference that one wave goes more than the other wave by the time they arrive at that same point multiplied by that wave number and so uh, this is uh, the path difference uh, times 2 pi over lambda so physically speaking what that means is the difference between uh, the two paths that the two waves have undergone to get to their point taken as a fraction of the wavelength of that wave multiply that by the radiance 2 pi because you know each each the period is 2 pi gives you the uh, wave difference it uh, gives you the phase difference so uh, so uh, okay so that means um, and since we're calling here the uh, path difference to be uh, 
in this chapter they call it gamma so let's stick to that so let's call this this guy here gamma now we know from figure 222 in the book uh, that if I want this gamma uh, so let me let me draw the figure slightly so let's say they're both uh, going off this point here and let's say this is the screen and uh, uh, let's say the other one is at a distance uh, D here and so this angle here is theta we know that uh, sine theta is equal to uh, now this guy here this guy here is vertical and so this here so you know if these points are very close to each other that means those two lines are almost the same and so this is the path difference between them two which the uh, the bottom wave has on an additional distance of that in comparison to the top wave and uh, if this angle here is 90 so this angle here will be theta so we, from trig we can see that this is the opposite so this is the hypotenuse d times sine theta and uh, usually if theta is very small uh, sine theta using Taylor series can be approximated to equal tan theta which is the same thing as theta so this is for small theta okay so putting these together we will get uh, uh, the gamma will equal to d sine theta times 2 pi over lambda Uh, okay and uh, We also know that yeah, so I mean, in this case, theta is the difference, is the phase difference. So, so if theta is the phase difference, then theta will turn out to be uh, the phase difference is 2 pi k, which is 2 pi over lambda, times the uh, path difference, which is gamma, which is the PD. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm calling this D. Let's just call it Y. Uh, since since yeah, the question had a Y in it. So so this is uh, uh, this here is a Y, which is the same thing as gamma. So then this guy becomes two pi over lambda. times gamma which means times y sine theta and now we can replace this theta here with this theta and it should do the trick so i will now be proportional to uh, 4 e0 squared 
cosine squared theta over 2 so I would cancel the 2 and, and I would get pi over lambda y sine theta and this is the equation we're trying to get to And then it says locate the, uh, what was it, locate the zeros, locate the zeros of the irradiance. That is simply when the cosine argument is a multiple of pi over 2. So, Iy will equal 0 when pi over lambda y sine theta is uh, pi over 2 or multiples of pi over 2 uh, so that's uh, 2n plus 1 odd multiples of pi over 2 uh, and so we get uh, Oh yeah, so so yeah, the, I I see here that this is what I was I wasn't sure about because there are some figures where y is the separation distance on the screen. Here they say the fringe separation. Okay, so they're referring to so I was calling my y d. Okay, I get that. So the fringe separation is y. So uh, if we solve for y, we will get y equal two uh, n plus one over two. Uh, times uh, lambda over sine theta and uh, so uh, as the angle increases uh, the sine of the angle increases which means y will decrease and the separation will decrease so this is y and uh, lastly for the analysis as theta goes up the sine theta goes up and y goes down so the separation decreases questions on that then